Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 164, and for this one, we're playing 510 at Bellagio. We get into several huge all-in situations. You guys are gonna love it, but before we get started, I have a few announcements to make. The first one is that my signature hoodie's out. So finally, after like years of uh, trying to put together a hoodie, I'm, I'm, I worked with Counterfeit, and uh, we put together this hoodie. It's got the jiggities here on the arm sleeve, and it's available now, so I'll have a link down below in the description box to purchase it. It's got this seam here as opposed to one over the arm, and it's super soft, super comfortable. It also comes with uh, these little tags that I signed just to say thank you for supporting the channel, and Marvin was with me while I was signing them, so you might get some Marvin fur on there at no extra cost. Uh, the next two weeks are probably going to be the most exciting in my poker career, at least up to this point. On Tuesday, June 8th, I'm going to be playing 51020 at the Texas Card House in Dallas, and that is a massive game. So there are regularly 80,000 plus or 100,000 plus uh, dollar pots, and there's a couple of really crazy players in there. I'm going to be holding my breath the entire time. Um, the structure of this is going to be slightly different than those normal big games where it's going to be capped at a $5,000 buy-in, but it's matched the stack after that. So stacks and pots will become huge quickly. So uh, very nervous, but it should be fun as well. Um, Andrew's going to be in there. And then uh, June 9th, Andrew and I are going to be hosting a 2-5 proper meetup game at the Texas Card House in Dallas. So uh, come out, join us for that. Then June 18th through the 22nd, I'm gonna be in Cabo. I'm gonna be playing a $25,000 buy-in WPT Heads Up Championship Tournament. Um, it's a 32-person field. It's gonna be me, Phil Ivey, Tom Dwan, Nick Shulman, Dan Smith, Doug Polk, uh, some guys like Steve Aoki, some businessmen, and uh, some other social media influencers. So I'm gonna probably be towards the bottom half of the field in terms of skill level. But uh, I'm trying to trying to study some heads up play. I know pretty much nothing about it, or at least I, I knew nothing about it, but I'm trying to get better and uh, trying to prepare myself because first place is gonna be probably over 400,000. So that's life changing money for me. And uh, I'm just excited to have an opportunity to to play for that much. So um, follow Poker King, I'll have a link down below in the description box of their channel. Uh, I'll be playing on on their channel uh, during a live stream. So that's how you can you can uh, follow along with my journey in the, in the biggest buy-in event that I've ever played. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're headed to the Las Vegas Strip to play in what's become my favorite game lately. That's the Bellagio 510. Even before the session begins, something interesting happens. You can see on the left side of the screen that there's a guy wearing a backpack. He turns and sees me filming, then a big smile appears across his face as he walks over with his buddy. Notice, his buddy is not smiling. That's because he just lost a prop bet. These dudes and one other fourth guy that we'll meet later flew in from Maryland less than a half hour ago. They agreed that the first one in the group to spot me in the wild would win $100. The winner is Justin on the right. Congratulations to him. Time to see if I can win some money on my own. I buy in for $1,500. This is when I run into the fourth member of what I imagine is a 98 degrees cover band. What's your name, man? I'm, hey, Bradley, I'm John. John. Here to stack your Bradley dollars. All right, dude. Let's play. Let's do it. I don't think that I've ever wanted to stack a viewer more in my life. We're starting a brand new must move table. It's four handed. John is in for 600 and informs me that he's only played 510 one other time, so I'm actually rooting for him to do well against everyone other than me. Right away, he takes down a big three bet pot against another opponent at the table. Maybe today is his day. He's a game, huh, John? Piece of cake, Brad. Piece of cake. Nice hand. You know, Brad, I know these videos take 20 hours long to make, so I'm going to try to send you home early. This kid is just asking for a one way trip to Pain Town. That wasn't a hand against me, John. <laughs> There'd be no epic battles between the two of us. I get moved to a separate main game where I'm dealt ace-queen offsuit in the big blind. The button opens at 30. He's a certified maniac. I played with him for years, mostly at Red Rock, where in episode 38, I had aces, and he limp five bet shoved on me pre-flop with queen jack suited. It didn't go well for him. The small blind is a vlog watcher named Travis from Portland. He three bets to 120. 
I don't want to cold call a 3-bet and give this wild dude behind me these nods to call, which I'm almost 100% sure he'll do with any two cards. Also, I could easily have the best hand, since the other two opponents will have relatively wide ranges from their positions. I cold 4-bet to 310. The button folds immediately. Small blind flats for 190 more. He has 11.35 remaining in his stack. He probably would have 5-bet with aces, kings, ace, king, and maybe queens. Perhaps he has something like ace, queen suited, jacks, tens, or nines. We're heads up in position. The flop comes a7-3 with two clubs. We have top pair and a backdoor flush draw. I'm glad we connected. Small blind checks. I'm not sure many worse hands can reasonably call a bet on this board. I check back for deception and pot control on the off chance that I'm up against ace-king. I'm not concerned at all about there being a flush draw out there, since the ace and queen of clubs are both accounted for. There aren't many combos of clubs remaining that I'd expect my opponent to 3-bet and then call a 4-bet with. I suppose maybe king-jack or jack-10 suited, but those don't seem that likely. The turn is the 8 of clubs, we pick up a flush draw of our own, the small blind takes it upon himself to bet 300. I completely underrepped my hand on the previous street, it's possible that I've induced a bluff from my opponent, it looks a lot like I have kings or queens, and don't like what the dealers put out there, in reality, I'm perfectly fine with it. I call, the small blind has 835 left in his stack and I have him slightly covered, the river is another 7, it shouldn't have changed anything, the opponent puts me to the test, and he rips it in, after checking back flop, I don't see how I can fold here, the most probable hand that I'm up against that's beating me is ace-king, as I mentioned earlier, the player might have 5-bet that pre-flop rather than call a 4-bet and play out of position. There's a tiny chance that I'm up against pocket aces or 8s or king-jack or jack-10 of clubs. We've seen how viewers of the vlog tend to want to come after me. Maybe that's what's happening here, especially when it looks like I didn't connect at all with the ace. No way I'm folding, given how this has been played. Call. Flush. Flush. Jesus. The opponent indeed has jack-10 of clubs, it's hands like these that give me nightmares. I replay them over and over and wonder what I could have done or should have done differently. I'm good with pretty much everything in this situation. I guess I could have folded to a river shove, but if this guy is calling my cold 4-bets with suited connectors from out of position, I'd expect him to turn a lot of those into bluffs at some point when he misses. He happened to be extremely strong when I was pretty strong myself. I've got to shake it off and try and play my best going forward. I add on for 1400 more, I get no mental breaks, just two hands later I pick up pocket jiggities on the button. I genuinely didn't love this hand several years ago, but since I started making jokes about it, I feel like I've run really well when I pick it up. Anyway, a player in middle position opens at 30, the high jiggity calls, I'm not going to flat, I 3 bet to 120. The initial preflop raiser puts in the 4 bet to 330, I could be crushed if he has aces, kings, or queens, I might be a slight favorite if he has a hand like ace-king. The hijack folds, I'm getting a decent price with huge implied odds, I'm not a big fan of playing another giant pot immediately after doubling someone up, I'm not folding though, I call, we're about to go heads up in a big 4 bet pot in position, this is where I need your help. If you'd like the dealer to put out a third jiggity, hit that like button on the count of 3, ready, let's go, 1, 2, 3, the flop comes 8, 7, 3 with 3 diamonds, damn it, it didn't work. The good news is that we still have an overpair and we have the jack high flush draw. We get even better news as the opponent checks. I don't think he'd do that with kings or queens with a diamond. Maybe he'd do it with ace king of diamonds or aces with the ace of diamonds as a trap. A lot of the time he won't have any diamond in his hand and we'll be ahead by a wide margin or at least we'll be in decent shape. I want to deny equity from ace king hands, particularly ones containing one diamond. I bet 400. The opponent is thinking about what he wants to do. My sense is that he genuinely isn't sure what action to take. Ultimately, he slides in a stack of black chips that has me covered. I double check to make sure that I have the jack of diamonds. Another interesting thing about my situation is that I went slightly north when I added on for 1400. I started the hand with about 1565, which is slightly more than the $1500 max. Technically, 65 of those chips shouldn't be in play. If I call and lose, I won't say anything and I'll give my entire stack to the opponent. If I call and win, I'll make sure that the opponent doesn't have to pay me extra. For the sake of the amount that I'm considering calling, we'll assume that I'd be drawing near dead because that's how I tend to do things and it'll be 835 for me to continue on. I'm not at all in the folding mood. I might lose $3,000 in a stretch of three hands. Buckle your seats. I'm calling. All right. I have no idea what the situation is. This could just be a quick session in which I get torched. The turn is the seven of spades. It shouldn't change anything. The river is the jack of clubs. We backdoor a full house and have the second nuts in a huge pot. You guys smashing the like button earlier obviously helped bring the run good, but it just took a little time to reach Bellagio. 
I'm almost 100% sure that we have the best hand, so I'm not going to slow roll, although the opponent is supposed to show his cards first since I called his shove. The other players at the table are shocked to see what we have and the run out. Wow, the chickadee. The opponent voluntarily reveals that we got extremely, extremely lucky. Aces, Jesus. Wow. All right, it should just be 1500. I might have been a little bit more, but I shouldn't be allowed to. Yeah, it should be, should be 1500. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, huh? I make sure that the opponent doesn't pay me more than he has to. I'm in shock after losing a pretty brutal hand and then immediately getting about as lucky as possible against pocket aces with the ace of diamonds. I told you the jiggies have been good to me lately. It's quickly become my favorite hand. Things can change rapidly with a flip of a card in poker. We go from being stuck piles to actually having a small profit. It's not over either. A few orbits later, we pick up pocket fives in the hijack. There's a double straddle on, so it's 5, 10, 20, 40. I could go either way with raising or folding. A lot of players are deep, including me, so I raised a 150. The small blind is a young Dutch pro. There's a group of them in Las Vegas. In my opinion, the Dutch are definitely the friendliest and most fun to play with out of the different European cliques out here. Anyway, the small blind puts in a tiny three bet to 330. It's almost a min raise and he's out of position. I'm not letting my cards go. I call to see if there's any magic left in the tank. We're heads up. The flop comes queen 10 5 rainbow. We flop bottom set in a large pot. The opponent bets 220. He started the hand with 1565. Over a third of that is already in the middle. I don't have much to worry about if I'm ahead. If the small blind has aces or kings, he'll only have two outs. And if he has ace king, he'll only have four outs. I call to keep all of his one pair ace high hands in. The turn is the ace of hearts. Could be bad if he has pocket aces. Getting set over set is super rare though. If that's the case here, it's just bad luck. The ace could be great if the opponent happens to have ace king or ace queen. The player checks, which doesn't mean much to me. I imagine he'd do that with pretty much every hand that he could have that we've already discussed, as well as something like kings and some small suited aces. The ball is in my court. If he has ace queen, we should be able to get all the money in right now. If he has ace king or some other top pair hand, I want to try and milk him when he's drawing dead to four outs or less. I bet 400. After a short while, the small blind shoves for $1,015 total. It's 615 more for me. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, in. Cool. Okay. Bases? Queens. Fuck. Three seconds. Oh, that's sick. Nice hand, nice hand. Hot for Dome. It's another massive pot. I can't get in any type of rhythm this session. We've gotten it in bad three times and are only stuck 1400, so that's good, but I've been in quite a few tough situations for lots of money already, and once again, I'm in a giant hole that I have to get out of. Next, we're dealt ace-queen suited in the hijack, under the gun limps in, under the gun plus one is the maniac that I told you five bet me with queen-jack suited in a previous vlog. He raises to 50. He just got caught bluffing in a large pot right before, and he seems to be tilting big time. The middle position player is Travis. He's the one who called down the player a second ago to catch him bluffing. He's also the one that doubled up through me with the flush. He calls. If I was in this situation against tighter opponents, I might flat. Here I three bets 200. Under the gun folds. Under the gun plus one calls for 150 more. The middle position player calls as well. We're going three ways to the flop in position. It's jack, jack, six with two hearts. Aside from having two overs and a backdoor straight draw, we completely brick it. The opponents check. They likely bricked it as well. I might be best. I announce a bet of 230. I don't know where my brain is because I initially only put out 130. The under the gun plus one player folds. Then I realize there's not enough in the pot. Is that 130 or two? two oh, sorry, I said 230. Yeah. I heard that. This bet can hopefully get a few smaller pocket pairs to fold and it denies equity from someone hitting any live cards that they might have. It also allows me to keep control of the pot for cheap so I can check back turn if I get called and if I decide I want to see a river card for free. If I'm not ahead and get called, I should still have six outs. The middle position player matches the bet. We're heads up. The turn is the eight of hearts. The flush draw gets there. The opponent checks. I could be drawing dead. I check back. The river is the queen of clubs. We drill top pair. The opponent checks once more. I doubt he'd do that with trips or better. I should have the best hand. I put my opponent on something like a small or medium pocket pair below a jack. It hasn't made a set. It could be tough to get much value out of those types of hands. I bet 250. It's tiny in relation to the pot, but if I can squeeze out an extra $250 of value in similar situations once every session or two, that adds up and makes a significant difference in the long run. I know this particular opponent doesn't like folding much. He was just seen hero calling a large river bet from the under the gun plus one player that worked out for him. The one thing that I don't want to see is a check raise. The opponent eventually calls. We turn over our hand. It takes a little while, but the middle position player finally mucks his cards. Ace Queen doesn't steer us wrong this time. We win a sizable pot to get back heading in the right direction. We're only stuck about 400. 
In this one, we've got Ace Jack Offsuit in the big blind. The cutoff opens at 30. The Maniac who bluffs a lot is on the button. He min three bets to 60. This guy does some strange things. I have no idea what to put him on, but I know that he doesn't necessarily have a premium hand. It's 50 more to me. I call. The cutoff calls. We're going three ways to the flop out of position. It comes Jack 7 4 with two clubs. We have top pair, top kicker, and a backdoor flush draw. I check. The cutoff checks. The button bets 80. I'm hoping he's bluffing and that we get a good run out for him to continue firing. I call. The cutoff folds. It's down to heads up. The turn is the king of diamonds. A non-ace over is not what I wanted to see. I check. The button fires for 80 again. It's too soon to fold against the known bluffer. I call. The river is a queen. The board got worse and worse. I check. Something very strange happens. You can see the button get $400 worth of chips and bring it almost all the way out to bet. Then he pauses as if he's unsure whether or not to pull the trigger on the bet. After a few seconds of thinking, he slides the bet all the way in. To me, it seems very choreographed and disingenuous. He's probably trying to look weak and unsure to induce a call. Usually when people are bluffing, they don't do things that'll bring extra attention to themselves. He knows that I know he bluffs a lot. We've even talked about it this session. I'm not 100% sure that my read on the situation here is correct though, so I'm taking my time to study the guy closely. I'm staring him down. It looks like he's doing some fake gulps to appear uncomfortable, and then he says, Now I really feel like he's trying to entice a call. That's all I needed to put me over the edge to let it go. Show the bluff. Show the bluff. Check the bluff. The player put in the min three bet with queen jack offsuit and then gets there on the river against us. I hate folding. I'm glad I didn't light $400 on fire though. I'm still stuck several hundred and I need to get revenge on people. Luckily, someone shows up wearing the revenge range t-shirt that reminds me of what range I need to be playing. There's a link in the description box below if you'd like to purchase one for yourself. You can see in the top left corner of the shirt, there's a square highlighted with two A's in it. That's what we've got in this hand on the button. On the gun plus one limps in. He's not going to like what's coming. I raised a 40. The big blind calls. Fun fact about him is that he's the same older gentleman that I stacked in the prior episode of Quad 8s. On the gun plus one calls the extra 30. We're going three ways to the flop in position. It's 887 rainbow. It checks to me. It's a board that could connect well with a limp caller or someone who calls a preflop raise from the big blind. One of the opponents could certainly have an eight or better. I check back for pot control and deception. The turn is the five of diamonds. The big blind checks. I doubt that he has anything too strong now that he's checked twice. On the gun plus one bet 70. I didn't check the flop to fold to a single bet. I call. The big blind takes his time. He then calls as well. We don't lose anyone. The river is the 10 of hearts. The big blind checks for the third time. Under the gun plus one slows down and checks two. Perhaps he bet turn with a diamond draw or a worse two pair and now doesn't feel good about what he's got. Aces are likely best. I bet 170 for value. Might be able to get calls out of a hand like 10-9 or a diamond flush draw that hit a 10 on the river. The big blind calls, which I'm happy about. He might have the worst hand out of the three of us since he never bet once on his own. He's just checked and called. Under the gun plus one is thinking very hard about whether or not he could be best. He eventually folds. I gladly turn over the rockets. The big blind pauses. Then he reaches for his cards to expose them, which he doesn't have to do unless he has the winner. I don't like to see that. It's not good. Not good when they flip him over. The opponent has 8-5 offsuit, which I'm shocked to see since he didn't bet a raise at any point. He flopped trips and turned a boat. I have no idea what he was thinking calling a preflop raise with it, but my guess is that he remembered me stacking him with the quads a few days prior, and he happened to see 8-5 offsuit highlighted on the Revenge Range t-shirt, and he had to get me with it. Doyle Brunson has said the publishing super system has cost him a lot of money over the years. I can definitely relate. I shouldn't have made a shirt that divulges optimal play under revenge circumstances. It's time to get read revenge on the sweet old man. I've got queen 10 suited in the cutoff. I opened to 30. The player who cracked my aces calls in the small blind. I'm about to destroy his world. The Dutch pro calls in the big blind. We're going three ways to the flop in position. It's ace jack nine rainbow. We have an open-ended straight draw and a backdoor flush draw. Plus, this is a much better flop for my range than it is for my opponents. I can have all the sets and pretty much all the two pair combinations. It checks to me. I'm going for it. I bet 60 is a semi-bluff. Small blind calls. Have I mentioned that I want to get him back? The big blind folds, it's heads up. The turn is the three of hearts, it's a complete blank. Small blind doesn't want to wait for me to bet. He takes the initiative and bets 60 himself. It's small and it appears to be some kind of blocker bet. He probably has a jack or something and wants to see where he's at for cheap. I let him know. He's at the corner of, I need revenge and you're getting raised. I bump it up to 200. The player tells me that I must have a better hand than him and then he folds. We get some of our money back. It's been a very interesting day so far. Still, I'm stuck a good chunk. I'd like to turn it around and book a win. 
About five hours into the session, we pick up pocket tens in the cutoff. I open to 30. The button calls, the small blind calls, the big blind is a new transfer player with a large stack named Sam. He three bets at 200. He might have a legitimate hand, but this is set up perfectly for him to squeeze. I opened in late position and got two calls. I'll have a wide opening range from the cutoff. I happen to be towards the top of it now. The players behind me probably don't have much. I call for 170 more. The button and small blind both fold. We're heads up, in position, with lots of money in the middle already. I'm going to need to win this pot to get partially or potentially all the way out of the hole that I'm in, and I need your help to do it. You guys, hitting the like button worked so well last time. I'm going to ask you to unlike it, just to like it again once more on the count of three. For those of you who haven't liked it already, this is your chance to redeem yourselves. Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. The flop is 1085 rainbow. It works immediately this time. We've got top set and the opponent bets 200. I consider slow playing it and calling. Normally I would. In fact, I did in the other hand when I flopped a set in a three bet pot. This time I raised to 500. I might do this with something like queen jack suited as a bluff or pocket jacks in order to deny equity from ace king type of hands. Another benefit of doing it with jacks is that it would allow me to take control of the pot, check back turn and get to the river cheaply. Here I'm doing it to give the big blind an opportunity to re-raise with aces or kings. It also builds up the pot right now before a potential overcard comes out if he has jacks or queens. I have almost 1200 behind, so the player could shove as a bluff if he happens to be weak and doesn't believe that I'd ever raise with a hand better than one pair on a relatively dry board like this one. The player calls for 300 more, it's another big pot that we're involved in. The turn is a queen, this is awful for us, we could be up against pocket queens. If we get set over set twice today, I might throw up. Pocket jacks won't like this turn either. The big blind checks. I've got 1180 total. It's less than a pot size bet. I want to get as much money in now before a nine, jack, or any other scared card comes out. This is the moment of truth. Let's rip it. Good morning. Morning. I don't get snap called like I would if I was up against a set or better, so I know that I'm currently holding the best hand. The player seems to have a real decision. He must have aces or kings. He's tanking. Maybe I shouldn't have jammed. I really don't want to let him off the hook with those holdings. He's not getting away. Finally, he calls. We're playing almost a 4K pot. We just need to hold one time in order to have a nice profit on the day. The river is the six of diamonds. It's essentially a blank. I turn over my set. Sam takes it like a champion and lets me know it's a winner. Thanks. I don't think that I've ever played this many $3,000 plus pots in a single session before. Lots of coolers happened. I got stuck a buy-in, then I got it back, then got stuck a buy-in again. I've battled long and hard today. I've been at a fun table, but I'm also somewhat emotionally drained. With this pot, I'm up 900. I play for an hour more and lose a little back in some small hands before booking a medium-sized win. After being down 1400 on two different occasions, it feels like a massive win for me. Played for six hours. I won $825. That was one of the, like the last two sessions have just been nuts with how many big hands there have been. Uh, I think I played four pots that were over $3,000. So that's, you know, that's not something that happens all that often. So uh, first one wasn't good um, <laughs> with that ace queen hand. Then like right two hands later, I doubled up with the, uh, what did I have? I, I spiked a jack on the river. So that was crazy to, uh, <laughs> to crack aces like that. And then uh, let's see what else. And then I got set over set and then I flopped top set in a big three bet pot. So a uh, lot of fun hands, really excited to come away with the win. What's up? Hi, right. how's it going? No, it's okay. And then let's see what else happened. I mean, I think that was that was pretty much it, but uh, really happy to to win. And I was having kind of the most fun I've had in a long time playing poker. Um, even when I was stuck like eight or 900, I was just excited to to be at the table I was at. There were a lot of good people there, uh, some other log watchers. And uh, it was just fun to make so many big hands, even, even when I was losing with a couple of them. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section because I'm happy to get back to you. 
Uh, pick yourself up a hoodie. I have a link down below in the description box. There's a very limited supply. There's only, uh, there's really not that many and uh, it does come with uh, this little thing that I signed just to say thanks for supporting the channel. Um, tune in to that Texas Card House live stream on June 8th and then uh, come out and join us in Dallas for a proper meetup game and then tune in June 18th to watch me play the biggest buy-in event that I've ever played, $25,000 WPT Heads Up Championship, and uh, we'll see who I get, who, I, who I'm playing in the first round. I'm, I'm uh, definitely nervous about that, but there's a ton of like superstar players and uh, just superstars in general, like Steve Aoki, so that'll be a blast. Um, all right, hope you guys are all doing well. Stay safe, good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.